all this stuff you know in academic papers and it, it is really public. There's kind of the mainstream news that we're all fed, and then there's the establishment communicating with itself. And I mean, I knew this a year ago because of family in the military, but the U.S. is planning the attack. They plan to let Israel start it, take the attack, be the victim. Netanyahu's even bragged in the Washington Times that then he thinks the Israelis will rally around him, even if they don't like him because they're under attack, uh, even though they start it. Uh, he'll say he has to. And then the big one that you mentioned, they're going to then use it as a domestic crackdown. And I believe... Iran will attack Israel through proxies, that's a no-brainer, but I believe the establishment, and I see them gearing up, is going to stage attacks in Europe, the U.S. and England, and use it to crack down on civil liberties and further expand it. You see them lining up for it. I mean, they are gearing up every agency of government for war with the people. It is, it is disgusting. Vice President Cheney already publicly stated that they were going to blame the next uh, major terrorist attack uh, here in the United States on Iran, no matter who was responsible. So you're certainly correct. Uh, there will probably be some type of false flag attack. Uh, blame it on Iran. Uh, use it as uh, justification for war against Iran. Of course, uh, Congress will salute and ship out. Uh, we very well might get a formal declaration of war, which we do not have now. Uh, but if there is a formal declaration of war by Congress, you might as well kiss the Constitution goodbye. There's an entire title of the United States Code that automatically gets uh, activated and uh, makes the uh, president of the United States of America a constitutional dictator, uh, just like uh, FDR was during World War II. We have not been in that uh, situation yet, although we do know after 9-11, Bush did ask Congress to give him a formal declaration of war, and they refused to do so. Uh, they gave him a limited authorization to use military force. But he showed them with the anthrax attack. He showed them with the anthrax attack a month later. That's correct. He, 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 um, they also had the, uh, the USA Patriot Act, which is the uh, blueprint for the U.S. police state. That was being held up uh, in Congress. Uh, by Senators Leahy and Daschle, and all of a sudden they got hit with super weapons grade anthrax coming from uh, illegal U.S. Uh, military stockpiles. And media sources also got hit to make it clear to the media uh, that they better not be going after this story. So the media have all, already always uh, go along with the uh, cover up on the uh, on the anthrax. Yes. Yeah, look, Dan Rather got some. It was all their enemies, the guys that took photos of Bush's daughters drunk here in Austin. They got hit. <laughs> right. It, it was clearly an attempt to uh, terrorize and intimidate the uh, media. Not that they needed uh, all that much intimidation to begin with, since they uh, very rarely uh, report report the truth. Is there any way to defeat this premeditated constellation of evil? I guess the general public has to stop being naive and realize that we have no future if we don't stand up against this. But I'm afraid, Dr. Boyle, it's going to go the way of Germany. People are going to have to have see the empire, launch World War III, invade all these countries, and then either this empire of evil will succeed or it's going to implode, and then we're going to get invaded by the Chinese. I mean, I, I, and people say, oh, that'll never happen. Well, I mean, if World War III gets started and there's nuclear war, I mean, my God, they, I can just feel the gates of hell opening up in front of us. Well, I'm afraid you're right. You know, if you read Huntington's uh, Clash of Civilization, uh, Huntington was ahead of me at Harvard. I went through the same program that, that produced that monster. And it does appear that the State Department has, the U.S. government has been following uh, the blueprint set forth by Huntington in that article, later followed by a book, first take out the uh, Arab and Muslim world, and then move on to China. And at the end of uh, Huntington's book, it concludes with, with uh, a nuclear war between the United States and China. And that gets into the uh, deployment of uh, all these uh, ABM systems uh, in Europe and uh, around China, in Japan, Korea, uh, whatever to uh, if if we strike first, these ABM systems are uh, designed to pick up whatever might be left that the Russians and the Chinese send back at us. And again, the Chinese president 
comes out and says, prepare for war with the U.S. I mean, our government is not moving all the nukes over there to play games. I mean, it's insane. It, it, it is shocking to know America has been captured by evil and that we now, Dr. Boyle, are living we are living in an aggressive, crazy empire that's got super weapons. I, I don't know. I mean, thank God the military has been blowing the whistle about the fake Iranian ambassador stuff and all the rest of it. And hopefully cooler heads will prevail. I mean, I've never been for a military coup because those are so dangerous because you can get something just as bad. And I'm not endorsing that now. But I mean, you know, is there an Operation Valkyrie out there to stop this? Well, you can't because it's not just a president. It's not Adolf Hitler. It's a whole crew of crooks in every position. How do you stop a cult of criminals that are power mad? Well, I think you're right that we, we the military, the, there are sensible people in there, uh, unlike these neocons who are, are completely irrational, uh, and, and they understand the consequences of what's happening. And we have to have more people, for example, like uh, Admiral Fallon, uh, who was head of U.S. Central Command and just publicly stated an attack on Iran was not going to happen on his watch. Uh, the military... Uh, are, you know, they take an oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, and they have an obligation under the Uniform Code of Military Justice to refuse to carry out illegal and unconstitutional orders. And I think, uh, obviously, you can't really expect, you know, people at the bottom of the pyramid there, but uh, I would hope that, you know, people near the top of the military uh, just start making it clear they are not going to carry out these orders uh, because they believe they're either illegal, unconstitutional, or fatally dangerous. That is one hope we have. Meanwhile, we, we citizens simply have to get uh, organized. Uh, we still have our First Amendment rights. Uh, we need uh, 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 protests, demonstrations, civil resistance, uh, organization uh, in these elections. Whatever can be done to head off this uh, catastrophe, we're no, we are not the Weimar Republic. We're far from it, but it's clear uh, we're moving in that direction. And I, I don't know how much time we have. I I agree with you on that. Well, and the system knows once they've got a big war going, they can move us way past the Weimar Republic quickly. Right. What once they get a formal declaration of war, we've all had it. It'll be just like uh, what happened to Japanese Americans in World War II the Korematsu case, and the Korematsu case is still good law. It's never been overturned by the United States Supreme Court. And indeed, uh, officials of the uh, Bush Jr. administration publicly stated that Korematsu is still good law. And we know that FEMA has the uh, internment camps uh, ready to go. So all they need is, is a declaration, of, a formal declaration of war, and that'll be it. Yeah, I saw a former CIA director on TV once say, just round up all Muslims, put them in camps in America. And that was a couple of years after 9-11. Well, and that was the plan uh, that Attorney General Ed Meese had. Uh, they had a plan at the Department of Justice to, to do that. And uh, they were uh, setting up uh, camps to do that. I didn't go see the camps myself, but I do know people I work with who went out and saw these camps uh, in the... Uh, uh, late 1980s, and, and they are there. I, I believe they've now been uh, taken over by uh, by FEMA. No, they have so been. Yeah, that's that's Rex 80, Rex 84. Now, now in closing.